I'm Shamal Lane with this week's Sketch to Scrapbook page. And here's where I'm starting this week with a rough sketch that has two photos and three circles. Um, th circles in three different sizes, one big, one medium, and one small. And then this kind of square of pattern paper in the journaling is going to go around the outside of the square. So um, I've picked two pictures that I'm going to start with um, of this fancy schmancy coffee place where they um, make the coffee with a siphon instead of a coffee machine. Um, and I had just snapped two pictures on my phone when we were there and thought I will get those into my album. And this is a page that I've already made the facing page in my album, so I'm going to kind of coordinate the supplies, but they are two separate layouts. And this is for an album where most of the pages are on craft cardstock, but occasionally I'm using a dark brown, but then putting craft cardstock in the layout somewhere. So that's what I'm doing with this page. So I've got my 12 by 12 in dark brown and then a bit of craft cardstock to use. And these two papers are used in the facing page. So this square here and the other half of this sheet are on the layout that will be opposite this in the album. These are actually um, significantly older pages, that, or papers. These were 2006. They are from the Love Elsie collection. So um, they are older papers, but I, I'm trying to mix them in with some newer papers so that I don't waste all my older investment in supplies. And, and some of them are, some older papers can still work quite well because they can be quite neutral. So I'm just going to be using this, um, this solid color ledger part here with, um, I'll leave the, the brown and green stripe part for later. So this is nice for journaling. And then this lovely polka dot, which is just a, a hand painted or hand drawn polka dot. So that doesn't really age too much. And the, um, speckled egg, a speckled egg color in the Jenny Bolin for Ranger paint matches this polka dot just perfectly. So I'm going to use that to pull all that together. Then I'm going to bring in some newer supplies. I'm going to use this pattern paper, which does your head in a little bit if you look at it too long. It's um, a stripe on an angle or a chevron, and um, it's the B side to this paper. It's called Venice, and it's by October Afternoon in the Boarding Pass collection. And then I've pulled out the Boarding Pass chipboard as well. I'm not quite sure which pieces I'm going to use, but I'm, I'm liking this with the colors. So... I'll keep those to hand. And I haven't picked any letter stickers yet, but I will once I get some um, a semblance of, of the layout on the page. Okay, I'm going to use this for the circles on the sketch, and that's the first thing I'm going to do. Now, you can cut circles with dies, with punches, or by tracing things. Um, I'm going to cut this the two smaller circles with punches because I have those handy, and that's no problem. So this is... Uh, just a circle punch from Fiskars. So that will be my medium circle. Then I have the same punch in a smaller size. And that will be the small circle. Now, I don't have a die or a punch that's going to be that great big bold circle shape. So what I'm going to do is trace something that's about right and I'm going to use this ribbon reel, just the packaging off some ribbon. And I'm just going to trace around the edge and then cut it out with my scissors. I'm just going to turn it over so that I can trace it and not have to worry about the lines. So now I have the three circles, I have my two photos, and I need to figure out how I will piece together this um, box of pattern paper. Neither of the papers I had pulled out were actually big enough to make a square to go in the middle of the page or anything kind of a large shape. So what I've decided to do is to create that from two smaller pieces. So I've just cut them to um, the same height, so they're both nine inches tall. And um, I think I will trim just a little bit more off this craft piece to make it a little closer to the square. Yeah, I like that better. So the square on the sketch for my page will actually be made up of two pieces. And before I adhere that, what I'm going to do is paint a frame and then set these papers on top. So I'm just going to put them in the right place and then mark the corners so that I know where I can put the paint so that it's in the right spot. I 
just shake the paint up and you can use a brush or I have a, um, a foam brush handy. So I'm just going to use that. I'm just going to paint the square and um, the inside edges don't matter at all because they're going to be covered up. It's only the outside edges of the square that will show. The paint is dry now and I've attached the pattern paper to the background and then I've gone ahead and added the two photos and I'm just trying to find the best placement for the three circles and um, there is the option here depending on what is in your photo. You can take this circle and put it underneath your photo and in fact I think it's going to look nicer like that. Um, so you could tuck all the circles underneath the pictures rather than having them on top of the pictures. So I think I'm at least going to tuck these two in. I think I'll leave this one unt um, not attached at just this point. Um, just so I can see everything else that I'm going to add to the page first. Alright, and I know that my journaling is going to go around here. But I do want to bring in some more color and embellishment and the title. I wanted to bring in this green, um, so I'm going to go ahead and trim the rest of this part so that I can see what I have to work with and figure out where this is going to go. actually just add a whole block in here that's not in the sketch. Yeah, so I'm just going to add some brown ink around the edges to make this match. And then just layer this underneath the photo. bring in a bit more color and, and some some lines there. And I can stick this back where I took it from. And then my title is going to go here and I'm going to add some extra embellishment on top of the circles. Just adding some layers for the title. The brown chipboard letters are American Craft stickers and then I'm going to use some mini market stickers from, uh, from October afternoon as well. Okay, here's um, how I would work with a layout that has three different sized embellishment um, areas. So I've uh, finished the title and added a few little bits to finish off this um, part of the page and then what I'm going to do is take certain elements from this and repeat it in the other two spots. I also have one other little thing I want to add in where I've been putting a camera on most of these pages in, in some place and I have a, a stamped little camera here um, to put uh, probably up in this circle. So then I'm going to take color and um, style kind of notes from this element to put into these three, or the other two I mean. And I am going to start with this little blue, um, the aqua paper, and I'm just going to cut a strip of that. It's just the B side of one of the papers that I used. And, yep, then I'll just ink the edges of this and glue it straight down so that I have um, the little strips of paper create lines that let the eye flow and like I added it here because the alphabets I was using they just wouldn't um, they wouldn't line up size wise because of the difference in sizes so to fill that gap just added that little bit of color back into it. I'm going to put the camera 
on foam squares so that it's raised up off the page. I did the same thing with the You Are Here sticker. And these two pieces are chipboard, so they have a bit of dimension as well. And then I want to bring up some of these other colors. So I've used um, the red and the yellow there. So I want to bring that up to that area of the page. So I'm going to add a red label sticker. Just put a little bit of ink on that as well. And I would nor normally start with it overlapped like that, but when I look back at what I did here, actually most of the pieces are separate. They're not overlapped, so I'm going to pull this up a little bit and not overlap it with the other strip, just with this circle. And then I also want some yellow here, so I'm just looking for something that could match. I tend to run out of yellow accents first because I find it one of the easiest colors to use as an accent. Um, so, yeah, add this arrow. And I think this will probably also need um, a little bit of sparkle up here. I'll come back to that. And then I've used this kind of red and blue stripe that's a bit like an airmail envelope. And I have a sticker has that same border so I can add that to the bottom here so that that also repeats with a bit of continuity and then need something with some dimension here I'm running low now on things that are yellow so I'm going to go with this scalloped square where um, normally if I was going to use scallops I would make them more prevalent throughout the layout but there is a little bit of scallop here so it's not completely oddball. And so that this area has something that's raised, I'll use some foam squares on the back of this sticker as well. And that actually will work quite well to bridge the gap between the photo and the embellishment cluster there. And probably add a few little word strips or another star into this little area here. So I just continued to add little bits to each of the sections until they all had um, things in common. So I added the little word stickers to each one, I added the little rhinestones to each one, and made sure that they all had some red, some yellow, and some blue. And by chance, it worked out that each one now has an arrow of some point. Um, and that's the finished page. The paint around the frame meant that I could just write on top of the um, the paint for my journaling with just a normal pen. I didn't need a pen that would show up on the dark cardstock. And that's my page for this week. Um, just a little note, uh, I am teaching a class that starts on Monday that's called Pretty Paper Party, and it's all about mixing papers and and lots of different things to do with paper. So if you're a pattern paper lover, I would love for you to join us and you can see more details of the class and the sketch at shamel.com. Thanks so much and I'll see you next week.